Hello and welcome. My name is Kevin Ashton. I'm a chef and food writer. And today I'd like to show you how easy it is to fillet a fish. We've got a sea bream and a mackerel, which I'm going to show you how to, to fillet. And I'm also going to give you lots of hints and tips on how to improve your seafood shopping and how to store your seafood when you get it home. So let's get started. So today I wanted to show you how to fillet a fish and that it's a lot easier than you think. I'm going to show you how to fillet a sea bream. Now there are lots of different varieties of sea bream and most of the sea bream is found in the Mediterranean Sea and also um, they follow the Gulf Stream up to the outer reaches of the UK during the warmer summer months and you also find them in the Atlantic Ocean off the coasts of Africa. Now they vary in weight between 300 grams and 1 kilo and today we have one that's 433 grams which is an ideal portion size by the time I've taken the fillets off of the bone. I also want to give you a tip about how I shop for seafood in the warmer months in the UK. I take a cooler bag with me and cooler blocks so that rather than just put the fish into my shopping bag and let it sit in a warm car it goes straight inside my cooler bag and stays nice and cool until I get it home and put it in the fridge and I even wrap the cooler blocks in tin foil and put them in one of the crisper boxes remove everything else and sit the fish on top again to keep the fish really nice and cold and I don't keep my fish longer than two days so I try to use it the day I buy it so I wanted to give you some tips on how to choose your seafood when you go to the supermarket or your, sea, or your fishmonger. You can see on this bream the eye is nice and clear, it's not sunken in and also there's nice glossy sheen to the skin of the fish. Now the scales have been removed by the fishmonger but it's still nice and firm, nice and plump and it has no strong fishy smell because fresh fish should not smell fishy. Another way you can tell how fresh it is if it still has the gills the gills would be nice and red. This has had the gills removed but you can still see its remains look nice and bright and pink and red which is another sign of freshness. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a sharp knife and we're going to start with by this fin here this bottom one and we're going to cut around there in a very shallow motion staying as close as we can to the head and then we're going to turn the fish over and start again by that fin around the second fin move as close as we can to the head and then you're going to crunch through the bones and you've separated the head. Okay, we'll move those out the way, keep our board nice and clean and as I've said the fish is already descaled because you want to take the remove the scale before you start the filleting process and if it does have the scales on you want to use the back side of your knife to scrape the scales in this direction to get the scales off. So to fill it it's very simple start with a sharp knife and I'm just going to follow the natural line so I'm pressing against the vertebrae the backbone that goes through the fish and just gradually in a soaring motion moving to the back of the tail of the fish. So you've taken it off as clean as you can from the backbone. And then we're going to repeat it again in a soaring motion keeping your knife as close as you can to the, the bone at the bottom, soaring through. Take your time and obviously you need a sharp knife for this and you have two really nice fillets. So now I will just clean the fillets up a little bit. So I'll take at a very shallow angle I will take these few bones out 
and remove this little bit of skin here. So I end up with a really nice fillet. Now if you want, you can take a pair of tweezers and just pull out some of these bones if you like. So we'll do the same again with this fillet, just to remove those bones. And then just slice that like that, get it nice and neat looking there. And of course we want to save the bones. Even if we don't use them today, we will freeze them, put them in a plastic bag, freeze them in our freezer, and we can make some fish stock at another day. So now we have our fillets removed from the bones, our two fillets of sea bream. There are a few more bones left in, and if you want to remove all the bones, you need a pair of tweezers like this. So first you run your finger along this line and you can feel where the bones are. They only run from up to about here and then they stop. There's no more. So you just take and you're trying to do this without pulling the fish fillet into pieces. So don't force it and you're pulling from right to left the bones and they should come out. You can just feel there's still one there and there's still one there and that's it. So now this has no bones in whatsoever. So we'll just repeat that one last time just so you can see it again. With this second fillet you have feel your finger running along, you can feel a few bones there Take your tweezers, get a firm grip of the bones and pull from right to left to get the bone out. Right to left, there's one there, but you don't want to mess up the nice smooth contour of your fish fillet or the appearance of your fish fillet. It's just one there and one there, that's it. Okay. So I also wanted to show you how to fillet and gut a mackerel. So I have a mackerel on my board. You can see the wonderful iridescent blues towards the striping and that the eyes are nice and clear. So the first thing we're going to do is put the knife in here and just draw it forward to open up the stomach and you're going to go forward through those two little fins as close as you can to the head and then you're going to just take the guts out into a container and then I'm going to wash the cavity of the fish just to make sure because there's a you can see there on the camera, on the, by the, the spinal cord, there's, there's a, a blood vessel. So you want to make sure that you break that blood vessel and then you wash all that blood out when you go to the tap. So we'll, we'll go and do that and then we'll show you how it should look. Washed the cavity out in cold water and I've made sure that I've taken all the, the blood from that blood vessel that follows the backbone out and cleaned that out before I fillet the fish. So the next thing we're going to do is take the head off of the mackerel. So again I'm following as close as I can to the head but I'm making sure that I take those fins off at the same time and on the other side cut through the loose flap of skin, follow the fins and get as close as you can to the head so you don't waste any of the fish. And then it's going to be the same process as we did before. Hold the, the fish steady with your hand flat and my knife is following the backbone. And I'm doing this in a soaring motion 
down towards the tail. So you've got a nice clean fillet. And again, I'll move that one a little bit out of the way. You want to hold your hand flat, hold the fillet flat against your board and get your knife going in a nice soaring motion to separate the fillet from the backbone. Okay. Now, mackerel is a little bit softer to fill it, and it does start to come apart a little bit like that. You can see the one is a little bit nicer than that one there. Okay, now mackerel is quite a strong flavoured fish, so you do need to have something quite robust with it. Garlic butter perhaps would be really, really good. Or you can smoke them, or you can cure them. There's lots of different things you can do, but mackerel are very inexpensive and because it's an oily fish, it's really, really good for you and good for your immune system. Keep that in mind.